Last video was the 10 great games of 2023. Now it's the time for the five disappointing games of 2023. In 2023, we had five games that I just went, what the hell? <laughs> and the first one was Saints Row Reboot. I was giving this game plenty of time to fix itself. I had played the game when it did the relaunch and didn't even realize when I bought the game that they had did a relaunch and looked at the PSN Games Monthly and saw that it was on the list and went, oh, cool, it's ready to play. So I popped the game in and sadly, you know, it was still a glitchy mess. There was times where I saw AI characters leaning up against an item that was supposed to be there and you could tell that it was supposed to be like a fence or a bench and it's not there. And then also there was moments where characters were just glitching out, their arms and legs were just a jittery mess and you, you get distracted, you're having a serious moment, a uh, scene's supposed to play out and you just see the character going and you're like, cool, ruined the moment for me. <laughs> But there was times where not only did it glitch out, it would have the enemy supposed to be where they're supposed to be. And you'd be like, well, why the hell are they all the way over here? How am I supposed to shoot that character? I can't leave the area. It will stop me from moving to that area. And I'm like, okay, so I'm just trying long range weapons. I'm trying anything. And finally, they would just jump to their doom. And then I'd be like, okay, cool. Next thing. But all things aside, even if the glitches were fixed, the story is horrible. The story is supposed to be you are college kids or people who need money to pay for their college bill. And it's like, why? Why would you think this story would be a great story to tell? And not only is it a weird story in general, you're supposed to be bettering yourselves, but yet you're over here killing people for stupid things that made no sense and there was a LARP section which is cool in retrospect but shouldn't be a main mission. Just all in all this was a waste of my time if I had not decided to keep playing and beat the game I probably would have been okay with it <laughs> and I keep it just for hopefully one day that Saints Row will get a, a new game and we'll be okay with it but I just keep it as a reminder that not every game you need on Saints Row. If they have another one that's an issue, I'm not buying the next one. The second game on the list is G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. This is a glitch fest as well. This is a game that it was the same thing as a copy and paste of clear out some enemies, get the final boss at that enemy's location, then you move on to the next one. But the weird part was the enemies would be stuck in the wall. The enemies would be in a pillar and you would see the gun sticking out and you're like, okay, let me go shoot them. You can't shoot through the wall for some weird reason. You can't hit them, but they can hit you. So you'll be getting shot at and you're like, I don't see an enemy, but it's going through the wall. So it could be a group of enemies that are in the next section ready for you because the AIs can sense you. So you can't shoot them, but they can shoot you and kill you. And even with the glitches aside, the story is not great. The story is one of those games where you're like, oh, this is going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. But in reality, it's just you're going in, clearing out a, a character, and the characters are all trying to stop the Cobras from doing whatever they're going to do. And it's like, yeah, that's simplistic. It should be an easy, you know, bad versus good kind of thing, but... I think they overdid it. Like, they tried to make a game that was, oh, we're going to do, like, a bunch of missions. We're going to take this and make this, like, a five-hour game. And it's like, you don't need a long game. If it's a shooter, you don't need, a like, a super long game. Just make it a couple hours. Make it a solid, like, you, you battle. I would have preferred, to be honest, I would have preferred maybe, like, a flight mission where you fly through with a plane, do that. And then the tank one, and then a final battle where you just shoot through a bunch of enemies. That would have been a great, like, 3-4 level thing done. I would have been an enjoyment, but this was a glitch fest. Not worth your time. Even though I paid super cheap for this, I regret playing this because I was like, uh, one bad game out of all the G.I. Joe games. Oh, hopefully the next one is not as bad. The third game on the list is Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill Slaps and Beans. I like beat-em-ups. I like games where you can just button mash sometimes and have a great time with it. But this one, I was really hoping would be 
something that I find like a hidden gem and it wasn't. It was a game where on the surface it looks like a indie team made a great game and it's based on two characters they are kind of like Cheech and Chong but for the Italian community and you go in and you start playing and about maybe four levels to the very end the audio starts going out moments where the AI characters are not doing what they're supposed to do you can't find where you're supposed to stand to get the end of the game to keep going move to the next level and it's frustrating because you have to keep repeating the level so it's not just once it's like sometimes I had to repeat the level twice because I was like okay finished it got through because it's random the AI characters are random they they populate sometimes I got a horrible scenario of all the tanky characters came out because just my luck you know it's a great time to have all the tank characters come out after you beat it like three times and then there was a level that made no sense to me and I get that they were trying to do something humorous and funny but it was you have to eat a bunch of hot dogs and then you have to eat and drink beer and you have to do it in a sequence that is great but they don't really tell you like hey don't go too fast don't go too slow they're just like kind of like here, throw it out to you and go for it. And you're like, I don't get this at all. I don't understand this crap. And I wish that it was fixed to where you could just play it all the way through and have a great time. Now, if they ever patch this again and fix it, this would go off my list. But until they patch it and fix it and make it to where I don't have to keep replaying stuff, sadly, this was a disappointing game, even though it was super dirt cheap. The last two games, 4 and 5, are going to be combined together because they are part of the trilogy and that's GTA 3 and GTA Vice City. Now the reason why they're on there, even though they're amazing games, is because the ports are trash. If you ever play GTA 3 and Vice City, you know that they're difficult by themselves. But to add a bunch of glitches, that makes it even more impossible to beat the game. The only thing that saved me from the end was, for some weird reason, the AI characters just helped me out and destroyed themselves for most parts. In GTA 3, there was moments where the AI characters weren't helping me. So there's a mall mission and you have to complete the mall mission to progress through the story. And there was invisible walls. Didn't know that. In the original game, there was no invisible wall. If you ran into a wall, it just bounced you back and you got through. But the AI character kept finding the invisible wall and getting stuck inside the restaurants and I couldn't get that character out so I had to sadly let myself be destroyed and then start again and then I would go through. I played that last mi couple of missions, maybe I am not lying, like 10 to 20 times because no fault to myself, whatever issue it was at, it was the glitching of whatever was going on. Like I would fall through walls, I would fall through the ground. I would get hit by random characters. I didn't know where they were shooting from because they were stuck in walls as well. And then there was moments where I would keep seeing my doppelganger in the third game. I would I would die and then I would just see creepily like the character just be standing there. And it got to the point where I was like, I've seen hundreds of my own character. And it was kind of like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if this is going to make my game crash. It never did, but I was just hoping that that wouldn't happen and lose my save file. If I ever lost my save file, I would be done. They're both very long games in themselves. And for Vice City, that was also an issue where you would just be driving around and you see the AI characters just spinning, doing nothing. They literally would just be spinning in place or they would be walking around. And sometimes they would just jump and you would not even be near them. And you just, they just jump, scream, and then that would activate the, the cops, which... In turn, is annoying that the cops are always chasing you, but it's worse when the AI characters are not even near you. You're like maybe five feet away from them, and normally that wouldn't trigger them to do something. But in this version, they feel like they're right next to you, so they have to scream and, and act like they got hit. And then the cops, same thing. Like The cops would act weird around you, and you're like, I didn't do nothing to you at all. Like I literally just stood there. And... Another thing that it, an issue with Vice City was, again, the characters would be on top of pillars, on top of things that made, like, if you would stand on something, like, I'm like, how did they get up there? They'd be shooting me from the roof. <laughs> and for some weird reason, like, they'd be stuck in the roof and then they couldn't get out. And when I shoot them, they wouldn't react to it. They wouldn't die. So it was 
really disappointing to play a classic game that kind of made me sad that I had to replay them. And I was like, oh, this is really making me hate the game right now. And I love these games. I play these all the time on PlayStation 2 and beat them. And the only good thing, the only positive thing is if you die in the mission, you restart from where you left off. If there's a checkpoint, you start in the middle of the mission. If there's no checkpoint, you just start. You don't have to drive back over there. That's the only saving grace that kept me from rage quitting both of them was because of that fact that I could just start from the beginning of the mission. But if that was not the case, they'd be still classics in my opinion. But hopefully the next game saves it. But I don't know. I'm playing San Andreas and I'm hating it because of all the glitches that I keep having. And them bending down and the neck being like really wonky like this like it's just weird to me so sadly gta is having that on the list and there you have it everybody five disappointing games some that were classics some that were brand new to me but all of them were glitchy messes that should not have been glitchy messes and i don't know how they got onto the table and into a disc but if you have played these games and you had some weird funny glitches, let me know in the comments below. What were the game breaking glitches that you had and issues with these games? If you had any disappointments in your 2023 list, let me know in the comments below or let me know that you made a video about it and I'll check it out. And I will catch you all later. This probably is going to be the last video of 2023. So see you in 2024 or stream. Bye everybody. the gamer gal she's here she's playing games linda the gamer gal she's here she's playing games too